What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> May, Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? You're a survivor, aren't you, Sydney? Give them all you can do is watch. <laughs> about a guy with a knife who just snaps. <laughs> Scream 4 came out April 15, 2011, and today marks its 10th year anniversary. And so let's see if it holds up or not. So this is episode something, question mark, a year later, and today we're talking about Scream 4. It might be my favorite of the franchise. The first one I really like, and this one I really like as well, but both of their roles. And the sequel is something on remix. So, and the reboots, and just horror at that time with the whole torture porn stuff, and the found footage stuff, which they news can start a horror at that time. So, does everything better than 2 and 3? I can say that for sure. 2 is a rehash, and 3 is kind of dumb, but still good. I think that's the one that I can say positively about this whole franchise four movies in all of them are good none of them are bad so it's just you know which one you prefer and all the new characters here are the best since the first one obviously we had nev campbell and then so here's the thing i also did not take notes for this film it's another one of those you know what i can remember this film without taking notes and i'm regretting it right now because i've gotten a lot but dewey and then the girl from friend what's her name in this film she's here as well it's also one kind of big issue that the three main core characters are still alive hopefully in this new screen five one or five screen all of them get killed off not only to piss off fans but be like hey we're sending out new characters get over these old characters essentially oh that's what happens i don't know but they're back with a new whole cast we got jennifer jennifer who's the name of that one girl from scream cream and who's trying to be the killer of this movie i forgot her name but i like her kirby hayden panettiere is that her name i like her as well and i completely lied about like the other characters they're all right those two specifically are good the other characters they serve their roles the whole kid with the live streaming stuff and talking about the horror movies you got the friend of that friend and then you got the crush of hayden panettiere and then you got the boyfriend who's a red herring There's a lot of red herrings and stuff so you got the cop chick who's hitting dewey and just trying to build it between him and his girl so we have dream killers which i will see for the end nev campbell we got dewey and what's her goddamn name holy crap i'm gonna whatever her name is oh god her name oh my god we got her story going on and then we got our new characters and then the cops so let's start with the cop stuff or not the cop stuff but the cop characters there's just these two cops that essentially do nothing is there to add more kills to this movie and then the cop lady that's hitting on dewey a red herring but she's also you know trying to create this rift between you know dewey and his significant other clearly loves him she wants him obviously she's doing it in a very spiteful way it made me believe at the time of watching this film in theater that she was like a killer you know like a possible killer there's a bunch of red herrings and so i do like that she's simply there to be a mystery killer and create this rift the new characters so again like i said earlier kirby and then oh god what's her name i'm just like her nev campbell's cousin yeah i think they're related that way they're cousins they're just high school kids that are doing high school stuff and they're bothered by their other people or maybe friends are they friends i think they are you got the guy with the long hair again names i'm like horrible ass so i'm just gonna I'm not gonna forget and i know right now and then you get his friend the live streaming guy who talks about the horror at that time the horror torture porn stuff and then the boyfriend he's there as well and and then I think that's it. In terms of the new core characters that are there on screen for more than 10 minutes, there's probably other characters here and there, but that's essentially it. Everyone else is fine, but except for those two that I mentioned earlier. Because get the main spotlight and more screen time, so it just makes sense for me to just like them. Oh, also, because this is the fourth screen movie, there's a breaking the fourth wall opening, which I'm assuming it is because it's you know, the fourth one. Russ Craven knows this is the fourth one. It's like, let's break the fourth wall the opening film with like stab six, seven, and eight. And then we get one, like two fake scenes, and then a real one. I think Lucy Hull or Lucy Hale, she's in, like, in the beginning of this movie as well. And this one just takes me back to like, 2011 a bunch of actors that are running up and now they're semi popular or like semi in work are doing well or they're just gone away so dewey he's got issues with the significant man hold on i'm gonna look up this like, goddamn name okay i just looked up gail holy crap i cannot remember gail but gail weathers she's like a retired author right and nev campbell right she's sydney she's coming here with a new book talking about her appearances facing Ghostface. and when she's arrived she's like she wants to write but then she just writes she has no idea what the fuck to write because she's a washed up author and she needs something something big and just something to revitalize her career so when killings start happening in this town again and Woodsbury, this is her opportunity to be like, hey, this is my big scoop, my big story. And even goes dying for it, by the way. She goes in this barn party and she almost dies for it. And I thought when she gets stabbed in the scene. <laughs> I thought she was dead. I thought she was dead for sure because by four film, one of these characters have died. These main characters, Gail, Nev Campbell, and Doobie, like, they had to die at some point, right? And I think it was a missed opportunity to not kill them off, right? This came out, like, so the last movie was, like, 2000, right? It was 11 years later. Catching up with these characters were cool, but they're gonna be, like, washed out or just retired or something, right? There's no way they can survive. Not killing them off at this point. It's just, well, it's not the best thing to do. Like, they serve no purpose no more. It's time to be like, hey, that's the main cast, you know? Getting old. We need to move past this. Get that. Doobie's there. Save her. She's out for the rest of the film. And then Sydney Prescott, she comes 
Black with a whole new book or stuff. With her new assistant. Her assistant, by the way, is a piece of crap. She has a crap assistant and a habit that she gets killed off. We have Sydney Press that she comes in. There's a book signing. Turns out someone set up a dead body with her rental car. So someone's going after her. And like I said earlier with old Gail and dude, this is the fourth time that she's been. Somebody's wanting, you know, want to go after her. And it's like, okay, this is starting to get ridiculous. You know, like at some point, one of these people are going to kill her. Anybody can catch fame. So it's like, anybody can just kill her, essentially. So it, I don't know. It's just, she's got to die at some point. But she gets the whole anxiety stress stuff again. She's afraid for her family members, especially her cousin. She's like, to save her. Ghostface is a lot more aggressive because there's a lot more blood, which I do like. I really like it. This Ghostface is really aggressive and it felt like to me it was gonna kill every one last character of this film. I gotta mention the commentary. So, Scream film is a commentary on horror during that decade. This decade saw ultra porn stuff, found footage. That's the whole kit with the whole camera stuff. It's for. He has a live stream going on and you know, live streaming is a big thing now. It's a play on found footage style horror stuff, which has a lot of opportunity to be good. But I think most found footage horror kind of suck because it's easy and cheap. I'm really with really that. And then the whole reboot stuff around this time or even before this time in the 2000s and like early 2010s and even now a lot of reboot texas chainsaw massacre the sequel to that sequel or the sequel to that remake we have friday the 13th nightmare on elm street my bloody valentine it was on play on that and commenting on that so back to sydney prescott friends that one of her cousin's friends are getting bloody to death getting just stabbed and stabbed she goes over misses they meet each other go face gets out cops come by again red herring with the whole cop chick and sydney herself but she thinks that sydney just kind of ran away from the scene creating a red herring thought like maybe sydney did come back and it's a perfect alibi for cops all the killing started only when sydney showed up so maybe she came back you know was haunted by the, her experience you know what she has ptsd she didn't start killing that would have been actually a really good twist and really good alibi for cops and dude to be like maybe it is it then i think a day later or one night later her cousin and Kane and pat and Tara, she invites their friends over her friends are invited something weird it is all and killed one by one they all get killed off until it kirby and her new boyfriend or the long hair guy and there's this amazing scene of her naming off every like horror film Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror. Now to us, meta stuff, and one, her knowledge of horror. And, I don't know, I'm assuming Wes Craven had fun and be like, this is name every horror stuff, why not? Fun. And then Kirby presumably accepts the fact that she won. Turns out, the long hair guy boy, who's name I'm getting, stabs her. And his motivation is kind of weak. Well, half of it is, I had a crush on Kirby a long time ago, and now she only recognizes him. Pretty lame and dumb. Yeah, whatever. Let's hear the other half. The other half of the killer is Neff Campbell's cousin. <laughs> Emma Robert, there we go. I, I, there we go. I remember her name now. Emma Robert. Turns out these two, they want to kill Sydney and kill everyone in the town to look as a hero because they want to be famous. They want to get their 10 minute fame. And I think that's really good and solid because around this time, YouTube was starting to, you know, be a huge thing. Well, like getting famous off of viral videos and stuff like that. Well, I think probably around this time, it just made sense for this, you know, these kids, this generation to be like, hey, let's figure out how to, how to be popular, how, how to be big. Let's kill Sydney Prescott. It's a good motivation. And how crazy these kids are, how far they will go just to be famous, get their 10 minutes of fame, and how crazy and how deluded they are i think that's a really good motive just a really good like twist and a really good reveal because no one would have emma roberts to be this killer she's a small antique little girl and she's strong okay it is believable slash unbelievable in a way i'm just gonna forget that unbelievable somewhat believable that she can i take on some of these characters and stab them and overpower them in a way a lot of recreations with emma robert and her character her boyfriend coming in through the window there's a lot of nods the first one like subtle hints the whole window boyfriend thing and then them trying to you know like when she thinks she kills sydney prosco she doesn't they like you know try to stab each other they look like an accident but she kills him and then and it really amazing scene where she hurts herself and the lanes that she will go to And I thought this would have ended. I was like, okay, it would have ended with the villain winning. Perfect. But then we get to the end stuff. And, you know, I think this scene and a couple other things in the film prevents this film from being great. And when she thinks she kills Sydney and she doesn't, so then she goes into her hospital room, says that Michael Myers line, and has this whole speech, which goes on like, I don't know, like an hour too long. I'm exaggerating there, but it went on for a bit too long. Sydney and Dewey and Gail are gonna survive. Bring a good point when Dewey there. How does she know she has the barn? But then Neff Campbell kills her with the whole electric thing or whatever, and she gets killed. Ends with her dead body. Body, message over her dead body wanted to get famous her, her 10 to minutes of famous she gets on the news and whatnot that's all she's ever wanted but she dies for it i guess it makes sense i don't know and part kind of ruins kind of prevents this film from being great even though i want it to be great i think it is my favorite of the screen franchise and then that's how the movie ends so Dream 4 man i really really enjoyed it again that end scene and the main character the characters not dying in the end prevents this film from being great to me but i still really loved it the new characters mostly you know all our original characters was like them not dying was ridiculous the film was a lot more bloody and gory which i do love i love my gore just the bonus and the motivations behind the reveals and why these colors are doing what they're doing was great so in the end scream 4 10 years later still holds up really damn good just not as great as i remembered or as i wanted to so that's it for me this has been the world so far and thank you for watching <laughs>